Antonio. Caesar. Let me have men about me that are fat, sleek-headed men, and such as sleep at nights. Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. <laughs> Hello, Kinder Longevity Lifestyles and Irons. This is Zach here with Secrets of Longevity.com. You just heard there a segment from one of Shakespeare's plays, Julius Caesar, Act 1, Scene 2, in which Julius Caesar was talking about Cassius, who later on in the play and in real life was plotting Caesar's assassination. Um, so it's alluding to the look that Cassius had about him and that Julius Caesar liked to have men around him, uh, at least according to Shakespeare's play, that were fat and sort of weren't willing to uh, try and step up and take over power. So part of this idea comes through from the warrior diet, which is why I opened with that scene and the, those words to sort of describe this idea of a lean and hungry look or um, what can be called the warrior instinct which can be fostered and grown through the principles taught in the warrior diet. The book is written by Ori Hoffmeckler, who's written a lot of great books. I love his work, definitely don't agree with everything in this book, but it's something I've been doing for the last month and a half and have been reaping benefits from it. I've leaned out a bit. That's why I'm just showing you guys without a shirt on, but I'm probably gonna put one on halfway through the video because it's a little cold in my room right now. But I just wanted to sort of show the uh, effects that I've been getting. Actually, when I did my last exercise video, that was sort of a week or two into it, and um, I was already getting results at that time. A very sh quick shift, I find, always happens with any new lifestyle change I uh, experiment with, and I just wanted to do it for at least a good solid month before I started talking about it openly as something that I'm probably going to continue doing for a while and that I recommend some people do, uh, just because I don't like to randomly do things on a whim and start talking about it. I want to actually be working for myself and actually have the self-validation first, of course. So the basic premise is this idea of intermittent fasting. It increases a number of very vital hormones for increasing muscle mass, burning excess body fat, and fostering a more androgenic overall metabolism. And this also has an effect on your mood, your personality, and your drive in life. So I personally was almost already following the warrior diet before I read the book and started to implement it more strictly in my life. I already started to tend towards this uh, lifestyle of eating very minimally throughout the day and then eating a larger meal at the end of the day. Um, so that's exact, pretty much the premise is, is that it's basing on our ancestors' history of how we generally ate uh, throughout our whole uh, evolution, uh, but specifically focusing on certain cultures that Ori Hoffmeckler looks at and discusses in the book that had this warrior instinct that really gave them the power and drive to succeed in the world that they lived in. So I'm going to give an overview of how the diet's structured. It's more about timing of how you eat as opposed to the foods themselves, but definitely the book goes into a lot of great things about diet as well. Um, then I'll sort of talk about a bit of anthropological evidence for it, and then uh, just give my thoughts and feelings about it and its applications for other people at the end of this video. So essentially, you're eating or fasting in a fasting state throughout the whole day, and actually it's basically divided into uh, the under-eating phase and the over-eating phase. And the over-eating phase is a very small time frame, around four to six hours at the end of the day. And so you're fasting, obviously, as you sleep and then through most of the next day. Um, but the fast can include very light, raw foods like fruits, vegetables, um, vegetable juices, but you want to stay away from very high carbohydrate intake. So minimal on the fruit. Personally, right now, I'm not doing any fruit. Um, but I'm eating vegetables throughout the day and also lean protein. And this is sort of where I definitely differ in my views from Ori's. Um, I'm definitely not on the, of the mindset of the lean protein 
moderate carb type diet that he advocates. I'm much higher on the fats. But that's a separate topic, I'm not going to get into that. You can read the book if you want to know what his precise recommendations are on diet. They might work for you, but you might need to do something slightly different. But essentially, when you eat very frugally, almost like little snacks that are going to be detoxifying anyways, type foods, um, you're going to stay in that fasting state. You're not going to have much effect at all on blood sugar. And the overeating phase is when you suddenly make this switch. And when there's that sudden switch, it actually increases your metabolism and can increase muscle building. So this mindset, the mainstream mindset that you have to eat a lot of little meals throughout the day, is more based on the idea that if people do eat just one big meal at the end of the day, they're not doing it properly. So when people fall into this pattern without doing it consciously, they're not going to be getting benefits as if you were to eat a really good hearty meal at the end of the day that had you know up to 2,000 calories in it. Um, and that can be spread out, of course, as well. As it's a four to six hour time period, you're not trying to stuff 2,000 calories in within half an hour into your body. You're eating it very relaxed and over the course of an evening. Now, when you're in that fasting state, you actually increase over that short period. When it goes longer than 20 hours, so those levels start to fall of different fat burning hormones, but you increase testosterone, human growth hormone, glucagon, you become more insulin sensitive uh, and there's a variety of other hormones and uh, bodily factors that come into play that help you start burning body fat and gaining muscle mass. The key though is to not go longer than 20 hours and when you do eat you got to eat enough to make up for what you haven't eaten through during the day and a lot of people their first idea is that okay you're eating a lot at the end of the day is this going to interfere with my sleep so you have to also leave enough room they have two to three hours before you fall asleep when you finish eating and you don't eat after that. That's just my personal preference, uh, depending on what you're eating as well. Certain foods might cause more discomfort in your sleeping state. Um, for me, I'm eating a more paleo-like diet uh, that really doesn't leave me with any discomfort in my digestive system. If I eat a lot of carbs, as Ori is recommending in his book, at the end of your meal, that would, for me, cause a lot of fermentation on top of all the food. Um, and wouldn't be optimal for my lifestyle. So the people that really would succeed with this diet is anyone who's active but not at the level of say an Olympic athlete. Um, if you were more active you can simply add more foods during the day and just sort of keep a minimal calorie intake throughout the day and then really increase it at the end that would have a similar effect and that's more the endurance athletes but even if you're a strength athlete you might actually be able to work this in and be, succeed with it. There are some you know, MMA fighters that follow similar type programs. Um, I know uh, Pavel Tsatsulin and a lot of the people over on DragonDoor.com are very thrilled and follow this type of lifestyle. I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but at one point they were, and they're very strong guys over there. So a big part of this that people don't always get right away is that it's a whole mindset that comes with this. Uh, Ori in his book discusses a lot of the warrior mindset, which is really fascinating, I found. And it's this idea that if you're an animal in the wild, or a hunter-gatherer out in the wild, or you're a hunter, or you're a soldier, you're so busy during the day that you don't have time to eat. You might graze on a few things. You, as a soldier, you might have some dried biscuits, of some sort of grain, or some raw vegetables that you eat while marching or while engaged in battle. But it's going to be very minimal, and you don't feast until the end of the day. If you're a hunter, you don't feast until you've caught what it is you're hunting and you bring it back to the tribe and everyone gets to eat that. And so that hunger is what drives you and fuels you to succeed and get accomplished what it is you need to accomplish. And it's that idea again, that hungry look. Or if you think of a wild animal like a wild cat or a tiger, when is the tiger going to be its most dangerous? When is it going to be its most active? When is it going to be its most powerful? And it's going to be when it's hungry. You don't see animals that have just gorged themselves, or even in a moderate amount, being that quick on their feet and active. So in people's modern busy lives, this can be very adaptable and work very well. In this modern age, we might no longer need to be out hunting, we might not be off being active all day, but even mentally, if we're in a job that's very mentally engaging, we have deadlines, we might be doing errands all day, whatever's happening, it's go, go, go during the day, during the work time. and 
you need to have as much energy available as possible to be able to do that. Once you adapt to this lifestyle, you actually have a lot of energy. It's not as draining as some people might think just hearing about it. Um, digestion uses up a lot of energy and really slows you down and bogs you down. This is one of the biggest things I noticed in high school is I'd pack these massive lunches. I was already getting into health food stuff in high school. I was eating like lots of fruit and whole foods and stuff in my lunches, packing my own lunch. And I just remember my late afternoon classes, I'd practically be falling asleep in them every day. I'd have a lot of digestive disturbances too because you're trying to work but you've just eaten and you want to relax and, and just zone out and be social because that's what sort of eating causes you to want to do. So I wasn't able to focus. Whereas when you get that at the end of the day, that's your time to relax, socialize, and engage in entertainment. Uh, so that's another aspect of this is when you get into the overeating phase, you actually give yourself that time to really let go and let loose. And this is what a lot of the ancient cultures did. The Romans, the Greeks, the hunter-gatherers, all these other groups, they would feast at night and relax, engage in their leisure activities, engage in social activities, they'd have their baths, they'd have their musical entertainment, uh, they wouldn't be fighting battles at night generally. And the other lesson here is that their slaves would be the ones that would eat all day. This is the other side of it, is looking at the effects of what eating constantly throughout the day does, or eating three big meals, or three moderate meals, is it generates the slave mentality. You're working for someone else. The Romans, for instance, had slaves, and they would purposely feed them during the day to make sure that they stayed in that slave mentality. They didn't have that lean and hungry look that could rise up and bite the hands that feeds, so to speak. So if you're the kind of person that wants to be independent, self-driven, be able to stay in an anabolic state, uh, have a lean and hungry look, it doesn't mean you have to be skinny, uh, but it does mean that you're uh, one to be reckoned with either in a business sense, uh, an athletic sense, social sense, whatever it is you're looking to use that warrior drive to put into and to plug into to succeed in. Then this diet could be something that you'd want to check out. Definitely just check his book out on Amazon, it's easy to search. His name is Ori Hoffmeckler, it's The Warrior Diet. And some other tips I wanted to share was during the day, what I've personally been eating is very small amounts of things at random intervals just to tide me over. Whether it's like some celery sticks with a bit of macadamia nut butter, uh, pepperettes, some of the heart jerky I made that is very lean because it doesn't have any fat in it really. Um, but then I don't shy away from fat either. I'll eat a little slice of cheese, a moderate chunk, but not too big. The idea is not to eat a big thing that would be considered like a meal, but something that just tides you over and gives you a little bit of fuel and protein to balance the blood sugar. And because I'm interested more in burning fat as fuel, I do take in the fats, but perhaps that would be something you want to experiment with and see what works better for you. Um, even doing a little light smoothie or shake or elixir is definitely fine, whether it's like one egg or a bit of whey powder or even some colostrum powder with either or of those. Something like Sorcival's colostrum is great because it has IGF-1 in it and IGF-1 is boosted in the fasting state. So if you get, take in a little bit of uh, foods that are going to increase IGF-1, you're going to stack IGF-1 on top of what your body's already producing and you're going to accelerate the fat burning muscle building process. Um, this you can find in the links below. It's probably the best colostrum on the market from what I found. It's definitely six hour colostrum, meading that it's been collected within that six hour time frame. When the growth factor constituents in the colostrum milk are at its highest. And I also want to mention that it's been used for centuries as a medicinal food. It has its uh, immune boosting qualities. A lot of people are talking now like, you know there's this colostrum thing that people are taking that hasn't been used for a long time and it was used by the Greeks and Romans, people that we're talking about right now in terms of having that lean and hungry look. You know, the Spartans, you've seen the movie 300, you've seen uh, what they were capable of. They might not have actually been as ripped as those guys because they were actually more or less around the 135 to 145 pound range um, and they probably weren't over six feet tall at that time. Most humans were around five, six to five, eight. 5'10 tops height. But yeah, in battles and things like that, when they needed to heal quickly, uh, not only did the diet help them heal quicker, but the addition of colostrum and herbs 
and just these other more natural remedies really accelerated uh, the rejuvenation process. So the Greeks and Romans of the time were eating fairly high protein diets with a lot of animal foods, seafoods, but they also had a decent amount of carbohydrates. Their raw vegetables during the day, but they preferred cooked vegetables at night, and they were experiencing very good health. Uh, one interesting little tidbit is that Alexander the Great uh, was said to be one of the first Westerners to have encountered bananas in India. And when his soldiers first tried them, they became bloated and started to have diarrhea. And he gave an executive order that no one was to eat them, and he sort of banned them within the army. Then there was also the Mongolian hordes that followed a similar regimen where they'd put meat under their saddles up and they'd ride all day and then they'd feast on meat and milk at night. They largely subsisted on just meat and milk. Um, and the meat was tenderized by sitting under their saddles. And even during Ramadan and the Muslim faith where they don't eat all day, uh, they also don't drink all day, which might not be the most ideal thing, but according to their faith, they're not eating all day during that period except at the end of the day. That has its cleansing and detoxifying benefits. Um, but definitely, if you're going to be doing this, you should be drinking a lot of fluids during the day, which helps keep that cleansing period that, that is occurring at night continue through the day. And there's profound anti-aging benefits from this. You have the lack of a buildup of cellular waste in the body. It's one of the only ways I know of to both at the same time have a building as well as a detoxifying effect with your diet. So a lot of people talk about, oh, I'm on a detoxifying phase, so I can't be on a building phase right now. Bodybuilders talk about this. Um, people doing raw foods, they're often detoxifying a lot and they don't get the building effects of a diet. Or some people, it's the other end, they're eating lots to build up and bulk up, but they don't have that detoxifying phase in there. And some people do make do with that where they'll have little brief periods a couple times a year where they fast for two or three days. Personally, I think why not do both at the same time if it's possible, and it is possible with the warrior diet. Cell replication slows down, which is a good thing. When your cells replicate every time they divide, you're going to have a degradation of the, at the cellular level in the telomeres. And so when this slows down because you're not constantly eating, constantly flooding your body with those nutrients, it actually slows down the replication, which is similar in effect to calorie restriction, except you're not restricting over the long run on the average daily basis because you're overeating in the evening. So for me personally, the big trick to all this was eating enough at night, and I've found that I do perfectly fine on this, and by having a more fat dominant diet, I think it works even better because um, when you're burning fat as fuel, you're not needing as consistent boosts of energy. So when you have a lot of carbohydrates in there, uh, you tend to run out of glucose and blood glycogen very quickly and muscle glycogen through the day. Uh, even when you have your workout during the day, you're going to run out of that quicker. And one thing that Ori recommends is working out in the morning, even when you're not going to eat afterwards, you might have a very light lean protein type snack with the whey powder or the colostrum or uh, maybe one or two eggs or maybe just downing them raw in a cup. And that gives you the amino acids and a few things to start the rebuilding process, but you're not wanting to flood your body so that you get bogged down in the digestion. Um, another great thing when you work out on an empty stomach uh, and don't eat for a while afterwards, and specifically if you avoid fructose for one hour before and three hours after any workout that is strength-based or even interval training, you're going to have raised your human growth hormone levels significantly, and they'll stay elevated for longer when you keep the fructose out and during that time period. So don't even eat fruit after a workout or before if it's a strength-based or a interval training type-based workout if you want to maintain those anabolic, rejuvenating, anti-aging hormones at peak levels in your bloodstream for as long as you can. So with that, check out the links below. Check out Ori's work. I highly recommend all his stuff, even if I don't agree on every single point. And if you've tried something like this before, intermittent fasting of some sort, or this specifically, let me know in the comments below. And with that, take care and embrace life without limits.